What's going on everybody? Today I'm going to do a little bit of a 2D kinematics problem. Uh, this is a relatively simple problem and I'm going to show you how I would have solved this as an undergraduate student in a biomechanics class and how I solve things like this now using MATLAB. Okay, so let's suppose for a second that someone is going to run off of a cliff and jump into some water. Uh, we'll have the person up here, the cliff is 30 meters high and the person is running at five meters per second. And we want to know how far into this body of water, whatever it is, a lake maybe, uh, the person will make it. So what is the horizontal displacement of the person? Now, if we wanna make this really interesting, we can do something like add some rocks at the bottom, right? So we wanna make sure that the person clears these 10 meters of rocks. So we wanna make sure or see if this five meters per second is fast enough to get more displacement than 10 meters. And I have here uh, these arrows. This is just to remind me to tell you that a, a thing that you have to keep in mind here is that horizontal and vertical velocities develop independent of one another, uh, assuming that there's no air resistance. And so as soon as this person leaves the cliff, if they leave it exactly five meters per second squared and there's no, or five meters per second rather, and there's no acceleration or deceleration in that horizontal direction, there's no wind, essentially, uh, their horizontal velocity is not going to change no matter where they are. Now, the vertical velocity is going to change, and that's going to be caused by um, gravity, right? Okay, so if I was in an undergrad biomechanics class, what I would do is I would look at my givens. I know uh, what the ultimate vertical displacement is. It's 30 meters. They're going to go from 30 meters to zero. I know what their velocity is, their their uh, um, initial velocity. And so I would take my knowns and I would plug them into equations like this. So I would first, uh, because I know delta y, I know my initial vertical velocity, which is zero as soon as you leave there. The initial vertical velocity would be zero. I don't know time. I don't know the time that it takes them to displace 30 meters or to get to the bottom. But we do know acceleration is negative 9.81. We know one half, obviously, it's one half. And again, we don't know time. So what I would do is I would take this equation and I would solve for t or time. And then I would know how much time the person was in the air. And I would use the same equation in the horizontal direction. Uh, and I would solve again, I, you know, I know their velocity here, it's five. I know time because I would have solved it here. Time ends up being, uh, for this particular problem, about 2.5 seconds. I think it's 2.47 to be exact. And then one half, their acceleration in the x direction is zero. Remember, they're not accelerating and they're not decelerating. Their velocity stays constant across the entire thing. And so that would be zero. That would cancel out this entire part of the equation. And it would be five times 2.47. And that would give us 12.35 meters. And so 12.35 meters is greater than 10 meters. So they would have cleared the rocks. Okay, so this is what I would have done as an undergrad. But as you progress, you start to say, well, you know, what if we wanted to, instead of looking at um, just the final position, the final displacement, what if we wanted to plot it continuously? What if we wanted to know their position at every time iteration? And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you how to loop, uh, create a, a while loop in MATLAB that would solve this kind of problem. Let's hop out of here and let's hop into MATLAB. And the first thing that I do, if you've seen any of my videos, I always like to clear things here, get a fresh start. And the first thing that we'll do is we'll plot some of our, uh, some of our knowns. So we know that the distance <coughs> clear is 10 meters. We know that we want to make it at least 10 meters out. We know that our uh, initial position, the vertical, which I'm going to call y, so I'll just put that up here, y equals vertical, and we're going to call uh, x as horizontal. Um, we know that our initial position in the y is 30 meters. We know that our initial position in the horizontal, or x, is zero. So as soon as they leave the cliff, they're uh, at zero. And we will ultimately want to know how far out they make it, how far horizontally they make it. We know that the velocity 
initial velocity in the vertical is also equal to zero. So as soon as they leave the cliff, their initial velocity is zero in the vertical direction. And we know that the velocity in the horizontal is equal to five. And as I said previously, that's not going to change throughout the entire course of this. So their velocity is going to stay, their horizontal velocity is going to stay at five. And then we know that the vertical acceleration is equal to gravity. So acceleration y is going to be equal to negative 9.81. And that is Earth's gravity. And the acceleration in the horizontal, also as I said before, is going to equal to zero. And that's not going to change because we're assuming here that, uh, that wind resistance is negligible. Okay, so let's give ourselves a little bit of space. So here we have our, our initials. We know that this is what's going on. And now before where we solve time, what I'm actually going to do is I'm going to call time a zero. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a loop that iteratively goes through time stamps of 0 0.01 seconds. And at every one of those time points, I'm going to recalculate all of these things. So instead of having single values, I'm going to ultimately end up with arrays of values. And what an array is, is uh, instead of, uh, I'll just give you an example array. So um, instead of having a single value, what we'll end up with is a bunch of values, something like this, you know, and, uh, and we'll just go continuously. All right. Okay. So how am I going to do that? Well, what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a loop that will run continuously until some condition is met. And in this case, because we know that the, uh, the uh, our height is 30 meters. What I'm going to do is I'm going to say while position vertical, or, or y position, while position y end. And what end does is it just calls on the last value in an array. And so because position y here is just a single value, position y end is going to be equal to 30. So we'll say while position y end is greater than zero, we're going to run a loop that will do a few things. And so what this is basically saying is while the position is positive. And what this means is that it's while it's between zero and 30, right? <clears throat> okay, so the first thing that we'll do is we'll take time and we're going to append uh, to time the value of time and plus 0 0.01. And what this is going to do is it's going to call time end on the first iteration, time end is 0, and it's going to add 0 0.01 to it. And then that's going to append that to this time. So what it's going to do on the first loop is it will take time end, which is 0, it will do our addition, and then it will append it to time like this. On the second loop, it'll take time end, which is now 0 0.01, it will add 0 0.01 to it and it'll append it again. So it'll do this and it will continue to do this until our condition here is no longer met. Okay, so that's the first thing we do. The next thing we're gonna do is calculate our velocities. So I'll start with our y, the velocity y, and I'm gonna do the same thing that I did with time. I'm gonna say velocity y end plus one. So end on the initial time through is zero. And what we're going to do is we're going to use classic, classic equations to solve for velocity end plus one. And those equations can be seen here. What we're going to do is solve for this equation here. We know what acceleration is. We know our time step at 0 0.01. And what we want to know is final velocity. So we're going to solve for final velocity by taking the acceleration, multiplying it by our time step, and then adding the initial velocity. So what that's going to look like here, this velocity is going to be our final velocity, n to plus 1 is going to be equal to acceleration in the vertical direction. We'll call n, although this isn't going to change, this is going to remain 9.81, negative 9.81 throughout the whole thing. We're going to multiply by 0 0.01, that's our time step, and then we're going to add velocity y end. What this is doing is this is saying this is our initial velocity. Take that and add it to the acceleration times the time step and append it to velocity. 
so that <clears throat> uh, we'll have continuous values, right? Okay, so then we're going to do the same thing. I'll copy and paste, save a little time here. We're going to do the same thing with x, velocity x, n plus 1. We're going to change all of these, though. That's always going to be 0. The time step is the same. And then we have that. Okay, so this is gonna this is gonna give us velocity as a continuous measure. The next thing that we're going to do is take our position, so our position in the vertical, position y, and we're gonna do the same exact thing here. The position y n plus one is going to be equal to, and let me just pull up these equations, the same set of equations, except now instead of using acceleration equals velocity over time, we're going to do velocity equals change in, in displacement or position over time. And so we're ultimately going to be solving for position final. So this position final is going to be equal to velocity in the y, and right, we're going to multiply by our time. Our time step again is 0.01. And then we're going to add position y and right so again we're treating this as our initial and then after 0.1 seconds given this change in velocity what is our final position going to be that's all we're doing here we're going to do the same thing with our x so and plus one is going to be equal to velocity x and, and you remember in the horizontal, that's always going to end up being 5, but I'm treating everything as continuous variable here. So even if it's a constant, I'm going to end up with a, an array that is the same length as all of the other things that are changing. It's just going to be a repeated value. Okay, so there's our positions. And we can do accelerations as well in case we want to plot these. So acceleration y is okay and plus one is equal to negative 9.81 so this is again just going to be one of those arrays that repeats itself because gravity isn't going to change throughout this and then acceleration uh, in the horizontal and plus one is always going to be equal to zero assuming that uh, there is no wind Okay, and then the last thing that I'll, I'll do to make sure that this, um, that this everything ran properly is I'm going to plot this, uh, and I am going to plot our vertical, or actually, our, let's say in the X, we'll plot our position, X, and let's see, uh, we'll plot that against the position in the y right and we'll make this look nice we'll make it blue um, line width of two and then what we'll do we'll make sure so we'll test whether or not this actually um, met that 10 meter so remember we're trying to clear 10 meters we want to make sure that we clear 10 meters uh, so we'll plot a copy this really quick we will plot a vertical line. I actually think instead of V line, I'm thinking of R. I think we need a Y line. Actually, we might need an X line. I can't remember now. We'll try X line first here, and we'll make this a dashed red line with a line width of, uh, let's say, 1.5. And let's go ahead and give ourselves some labels here. So Y label is going to be vertical position and our x label will be our horizontal position okay i'm going to go ahead and run this and let's hope that it works out oh i have to save it let's just do this i'll just grab everything go up 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 Oh, did we spell something wrong? Acceleration. Yeah, what did I do? Oh, there we go. That's what's wrong. 
MATLAB does exactly what you tell it to do. So if something's spelled wrong, you'll get some errors. That's okay. Okay, let's see. Yeah, there we go. Okay, so what did we say when we did this by hand? We ended up with 12.35. Uh, and so our last value on our horizontal position is, you can see, uh, 12.35. So there you have it. But instead of just having that one value, we actually have continuous measures here, right? So I could just scroll along this line and get all of these different things. And then if you remember our time, when we calculated time using those equations, uh, we ended up with, uh, what was it, 2.47? So the length of our time uh, variable, actually let's just call time, the last variable in time, time end, should be 2.47. It's 2.47 seconds, and let's just go back to that plot. That vertical dashed line there is the 10 meters that we needed to clear, so we're beyond it. That means we cleared it. All right, I'll do one more thing before I end this video, uh, and I do have a follow-up video to it. Let's say we wanted to see how fast, I think I made a little slide for it even. Got a, let's see. Yeah, I did. Okay, so if I wanted to know how fast, what's the minimal speed I had to be running to clear 10 meters, what I could do is I could come in here and do some plug and play, right? So I could say, well, if I was running four meters per second, would I clear it? So let's go ahead and run this with four meters per second. I haven't changed anything else, just that, that horizontal velocity. Let's see if I make it with four meters per second. So I'll run it. Oh, it keeps, asking, it keeps asking me to save it. It's okay. We'll just run it like this. Do I, do I clear it? Four? Oh, no. So you see that the dashed vertical line is just off the edge of the graph here. And you see I don't make it. So 10 is the very edge of the graph. We don't make it. So what if we went in and said, uh, we know 5 makes it. We know 4 doesn't make it. What about 4.2? Let's do that. Go ahead and grab everything and run it. Will 4.2 make it? Yeah, 4.2 just barely makes it. So what you could do if I'm asking you to solve for the, the minimal uh, velocity that will clear it, you could do this plug and play like we're doing right now. Uh, or because you're using a coding language, you could set something up to optimize this to say, you know, what is the minimal amount of velocity we need to clear 10 meters? And that is what I'm actually going to show you in the next video. So please stay tuned. If you liked this video, go ahead and give me a like, share it, subscribe to my channel. Uh, definitely tune in for part two where I'm going to show you how to set up a code to automatically detect or um, calculate the minimum velocity needed to clear 10 meters. And check out all my other videos. Uh, you can also check me out on Twitter, LinkedIn. A lot of these codes are up on GitHub. Uh, of course, you can you know, keep watching me on YouTube. And I think that'll do it for now. I want to get to this next video. All right, take it easy and keep coding.